wearing that kind of clothing from the back view. So you can get a sense of uh, how the thing uh, was cut. I haven't given you any illustrations of uh, Dutch burgers for the simple reason that the Dutch burgers were show-offs. <laughs> What More than was the ball? most expensive dye in the 17th century? Purple? Nope. Black. 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 All of those French burghers in all of those portraits are not wearing black because they were Puritans, or because they were dour, or because they were dreary, or because they were Calvinists. They were wearing black because they were rich. And they wanted you to know they were rich. And the richer they got, the more black they wore. Here's a Dutch burger with his wife. He's wearing black. She's wearing black. We can afford lots and lots of black dyed fabric in our house. With the bleached white. And yes, we lakes. have bleached our collars white. We are black. White, we are rich, we are rich, we are filthy, filthy rich. That's what all those portraits of Dutchmen and Dutch women in black and white are saying. Not we are Calvinists, but no, we. She's not a Calvinist, she us. has a red petticoat. Mm -hmm. uh, Calvinists wore red petticoats. In the painting? <laughs> yes, they did. I have here as we go up. A number of Gold my on the other uh, favorite portraits. Two more gentlemen wearing uh, suits. And finally, moving into the nobility, this is Anthony van Dyck's portraits of Lord John and Lord Bernard Stuart, which show you what a nobleman uh, could wear when he was posing for his portrait. And the acute sentence here is what he wore when he was posing for his formal portrait. And I'm going to show you from a modern illustration what the difference is. How many of you have ever had to be a participant in somebody's formal wedding. Did you line up for a photograph? Were you wearing anything that bore any resemblance to what you wear on an ordinary day? No. Formal posed portraits were public relations. They were statements that people made about themselves on how they wanted themselves to be perceived. And still are. They still are. <laughs> Formal posed portraits have a purpose. Bernhard of Saxe-Weimar, every formal portrait that he had himself had of himself, he was wearing black cavalryman's armor. He wanted to be perceived by the public as a general, a military strategist. His brother, Duke Ernst, almost every formal pose portrait he's in, he's wearing a scholar's gown with a little small white, uh, not even the full color, just the little small cravat. He wants to be seen as an educational reporter. So he's wearing the equivalent of an academic gown in his portraits. These people are posing themselves for public consumption because portraits, the original oil, was expensive. But if you get into etchings, woodcuts, these things were copied and distributed in the broadsheets and the newspapers by the hundreds and sometimes by the thousands. These were 
translated for public consumption. This is how I want to be seen. And therefore, we have a friend of ours, Gustavus Adolphus. How did Gustavus want to be seen? He's on a horse there, wearing his buff coat and his riding boots. He too is presenting himself as a military leader. Or he is presenting himself as a diplomat. And he has another version of himself. When I didn't bring it, but when he was younger and livelier, he had that rakish picture of himself in the bright red <laughs> round hat, uh, which meant I am not just a dull dynast. I am a guy with personality and zip. You know, they were telling things about themselves. The portraits of upper class women tend to be much stiffer than the portraits of upper class men. You've got him coming around. Here's his wife. She looks like a doll. She is sat, she just was posed there uh, to show off that as a daughter of the court of Brandenburg, her brother could afford to dress her in really expensive clothes. And nine out of 10 portraits of women of the upper classes are really pictures of their clothes. By which I mean that ordinarily, the portrait painter painted the clothes on a mannequin. And when he got the clothes suitable and the sitter and the person paying for the commission, who frequently is not the sitter herself, approved of the clothes, then she came in, stuck her hands through the sleeves and her head over the collar, and he added her hands and face as an afterthought, almost. Which is why she looks so. Uh, the, which is why they look like they're all mannequins. They were mannequins. The clothes were put on mannequins and painted first, with uh, the faces added later, which is why uh, drawings of the women tend to be so much more lifelike than the paintings, because they really were usually sketched from life and uh, much more thick. Usually at this point, when I'm doing clothing, uh, I have Karen Bergstrahl here, and she does uh, writing clothing, but uh, she isn't here. So I'm going to uh, vary uh, a little bit and just uh, pass around a picture of a horseman and I'm going to borrow Kevin and Karen, if they will uh, be As so long as you don't move back and forth, we'll be I, All right, I will sit very, stand very still. Well, um, stay within that chair and you'll be here. All right. Uh, Karen has uh, dressed herself as an upper class woman of the period. She has also done a wondrous thing. If you look at the pattern of her dress, this is a reproduction of the purple with silver thread embroidery of Gustavus Adolphus' wedding suit. Really? It is. It's, if, um, I know it's almost perfect. What they did is they did a woodcut of the embroidery and then used the woodcut to print fabric. It was done in the time. Okay, um, that's the printed fabric started to be more common in this time instead wow. of having mm -hmm. to embroider it, which means that the upper upper middle class could then have you know something not bland because who had time to embroider? And she's wearing a lace collar with a lace edging. Lace with lace a lot on of it. lace on the edging. We have a story in canon called by hook or by crook, <laughs> which deals with the impact yeah. upon fashion of the introduction of crochet, mm -hmm. which had not yet been invented. It wasn't no. invented until the early 19th century. Right. But lace is complicated to make. 
it's a very elaborate skill. Crochet, you can do with a hook, which anyone can whittle, and a string. And you can make a pattern, an edging, that looks almost like lace. Which means that these people who have been demonstrating their wealth by lace and lace edged collars will be distraught. Will be distraught. Yes, <laughs> all of a sudden, other people will be doing it. Which, of course, runs into the subject of sumptuary ordinances. Ah. Yes. You know what? The neat thing about uptime techniques is going to be that they aren't comprised in the existing sumptuary or crochet hadn't been invented. That's yet. right. So there are no <laughs> limits on the amount of crochet you can have. Similarly with Karen's introduction of batik. Right. Uh, people who want elaborate patterns and colors can have them batik and they don't which means that, you know, it takes a long time to revise an ordinance. And, and for God's sakes, the stone's reintroduction mm -hmm. of the tie-dye. You, you may want to tell them what sumptuary means, because I don't think all the... It's simply I know what it means. Does everybody limits know? On, no, limits yeah. on luxury and clothing. Uh, how much Certain classes can, wear, can only wear what? certain things. Certain. So... Uh, they're very elaborate. There is also the Are phenomenon Yes, you yes. can sit down yeah, uh, again now. That not all places were up to date by any means. Uh, one of the places that was most out of date was the Bavarian capital of Munich because the Dukes of Bavaria had stricter sumptuary ordinances than almost anyone else, and they enforced them with more zeal than anyone else, which meant that the Bavarians were always at least 50 years behind the times, and sometimes more. These are actual uh, watercolor washes of people seen in the Schrannenplatz in central Munich in the 1630s. And as you will note, they look like people from the 1580s or even from the 1560s because the uh, things were limited. And so was that also colors or uh, patterns? or Colors, patterns, uh, what kind of fur you could use to line your shoes, how wide your ribbons could be, uh, the Dukes of Bavaria really got into the concept of regulating the minutiae of life. Were you going to comment on Kevin as well? At the um, same time? I am, but not quite yet. Shut up, Rick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who woke him up? <laughs> uh, however, no if he wants to sit down, uh, the no, lace, behind you. the double color, the flat color, this is not the period of the rough. Only the most old fashioned men and women elderly were still wearing ruffs, and they weren't wearing the big ruffs of the they 1580s. They were very basically small. small ruffled collars, and even then it was terribly old-fashioned. This is the era of the flat collar. It's the era before the cravat. If also, men can grab 